Hello there everyone, my name is Tom. In today's project, I am going to be using the Studio 5000 Logics Designer software to create a periodic task. Now I'm going to scroll down here and show you the materials for today's project. First, I have a Allen Bradley Control Logics controller. Next, I will be using the Studio 5000 Logic Designer software. And if you follow the link that I have here, it should take you directly to the webpage where the items are located to where you can gather information such as manuals and documentation. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit further and show you the project description. In the project description, I am basically telling you that I am going to create a periodic task and I am going to be setting the period and the priority for the task. Now you're probably wondering what you could actually use a periodic task for. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit further and show you a picture I have here. In this picture, I am showing you a plastics extruder. Now one of the things in this process that you can use a periodic task for is the heaters here that are on the barrel to monitor and control the heat of the barrel. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the process that happens here. First, we have raw material that comes in here, usually in the form of plastic pellets or regrind plastic. And it comes down in here to the feed throat. And from there, it is pushed downstream by a screw that turns, that rotates within the barrel here. Through these zones here, as it's heated, it begins to melt, and you also generate heat from the actual friction of the screw turning in the barrel and the product mixing. So that's pretty much where you could actually use a periodic task for. I'm going to go to the hands-on portion of the project right now. Okay, we're going to get started in the hands-on portion now. And in order to create a new task, we need to be in the controller organizer here. Next, I need to come down to the task and click on it to highlight it and right click and select new task. Now that opens up this new task window here. Under name, I'm going to call it temperatures. Next in the description here, I'm just going to type in barrel temps. Under type, I am going to click the drop down here. And as you can see, I can select from either a periodic task or an event task. The continuous task is missing here because the continuous task is already being used by the main task here. And you can see that by the circular arrow here that is over the main task folder here. So here I will leave it as periodic. Next I'm going to come down here to the period and I'm going to add a little bit of time here. I'm going to give it 50 milliseconds. Since the process of heating and cooling of the barrel is such a long period, I can actually add more time to this period. Next I'm going to come down here to priority. Under priority here, the priority here is 1 through 15. 1 is the highest priority and 15 is the lowest priority. So I'm going to select 15 as my priority here. Next is the watchdog. The watchdog I'm going to leave at 500 milliseconds for right now. So next I'm going to come down here to the 
this able automatic output processing to reduce pass overhead. And I'm going to leave that unchecked. And I am also going to leave unchecked the inhibit task because I want the task to run. So next I'm going to click on OK. And I have created a new task here in the controller organizer under the tasks folder. I have a main task right here, along with a temperatures task. As I said before, the main task here is a circular arrow, which means it is the continuous task. The temperatures task, if you look on the folder, it looks like a clock, which is for period. So I'm going to right click on the temperatures task here and then select properties. That brings me up the task properties temperatures window here. And if you look at the top here, I have four tabs. One is general. That gives me the name and the description of this task. Then the configuration tab here has the configuration of the temperature task here. And under program schedule, there are no programs added to this task yet, nor subroutines. So that's going to be empty. And if I come over here to the monitor, you can see that I can monitor the scan time here of this task and also the interval times, which is the elapsed time between triggers. Now I'm going to go online here. Online, I can see the actual milliseconds that this task is taking, which is the maximum here. And I also have the last scan right here. And I also have the interval, the elapsed time between the triggers, which is the max here, and also the minimum here. And if you have a task overlap count here, it will show up here. But as you can see, the count is zero, so there is no overlap. I'm going to pull up the main task for you, come down to properties, and I'm going to come over here and show you the difference between the two monitors here. As you can see, there is no program here in my temperatures task, but in the main task here, I have a program running, and you can see the maximum and the last scans. Also, in the interval times here, you can see the maximum and the minimum and that there is no overlap here. So if I wanted to reset this, all I would have to do is click on the reset. And that resets it and it waits for the next scan and updates it. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it or you learned something, let me know. Leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you next video.